Hello, and today we're going to talk about monoclonal antibodies, something that has been all over the news. Monoclonal antibodies have been primarily, primarily used as a treatment for certain types of cancer. But what are monoclonal antibodies, and could it be a viable option for treating COVID-19? So what is a monoclonal antibody? It is an antibody that has been produced in the lab from a single mono type of antibody. The blood is initially taken from a person that has been infected with COVID-19 and has done very well, i.e. they have produced antibodies that have destroyed the virus. This antibody is very specific for the spike protein on the virus. In the lab, there is a process that involves cloning this one type of antibody, thus producing multiple copies of the antibody. This preparation compared to plasma or blood transfusion from a convalescent sick patient is much better. It circumvents problems associated with transfusing blood or plasma. The side effects from this monoclonal infusion are very minimal. One may experience low-grade fever, chills, headaches, itching, some dizziness, and mild throat pain. And again, these side effects are rare. This type of treatment was the treatment that Donald Trump received in October 2020. He did very well with the monoclonal treatment. Currently, there are three available that have been granted emergency use authorization, authorization EUA, by the FDA. And they are Regeneron, which is a combination of two shown on the screen, Eli Lilly's, which is also a combination of the two that are listed on the screen. The names of these um, are very difficult, so you can see the, them on the screen. And number three, GlaxoSmithKline, which is Sotrofamab. When should you give them monoclonal antibody? Well, the first week of an infection, it, it consists more of fever, nausea, muscle pain, fatigue, and headaches. The second week is when the life-threatening complications occur, if they are going to happen. The monoclonal antibodies are directed at preventing lo lo those life-threatening complications. There was a paper published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and by the way, this is one of the most prestigious publications in the United States in January of 2021, which studied Regeneron as it relates to decreasing the viral load. The link to the study can be found below. There was also a preprint published May 2021 in MedRx. This was the phase three of the study, which demonstrated a 70% decrease in death rates as well as hospitalizations when compared to placebo. In this paper, it was also demonstrated that individuals that received the monoclonal antibodies improved four days sooner. In July of 2021, there was another study published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Now, this study showed out of 518 patients receiving monoclonal antibodies, only two were hospitalized. In the 517 patients receiving placebo, 36 were hospitalized. None of the patients receiving monoclonal antibodies died. 10 of the patients that received the placebo died. Even if you don't feel a big difference after receiving the monoclonal antibody infusion, they are killing off viruses so the disease doesn't get as complicated and last as long, as well as decrease the risk of long haulers. So what is the criteria for receiving monoclonal antibodies? It can be broken down into three categories, age, medical conditions, and culture. First, when it comes to age, anyone 65 years or older should strongly consider monoclonal antibodies when they first start experiencing symptoms and are found to be positive for COVID. They cannot be on oxygen as a result of their COVID infection. However, if they have an illness and they are on oxygen and the concentration of oxygen oxygen they are requiring hasn't changed, then that doesn't quite disqualify them. The monoclonal antibody should be given 10 days after the person begins to experience symptoms. Also, the, uh, the criteria states the BMI should be less than 25 and, and if the patient has diabetes or hypertension. Other medical conditions include chronic kidney disease or heart disease, immunocompromised patients, i.e. cancer patients, patients that, have, that are HIV positive, 
patients receiving chemotherapy or radiation, and any other chronic illness that causes them great functional difficulty. The other category is culture, and that includes Latinos and Blacks. These two uh, cultures have suffered grave illnesses uh, during this pandemic. Anyone fitting into these community categories of people qualifies for receiving monoclonal antibodies if they become COVID positive, and especially if they have any of the previous mentioned medical conditions. There is another subset of individuals that can receive this treatment, and these are individuals that do not have COVID-19, but who have been exposed. Exposure less than 96 hours, and this is to prevent symptomatic disease. This is called post-exposure prophylaxis. Also, most importantly, and this is where I get a lot of questions involving the unvaccinated person, not fully vaccinated person or the person who has been fully vaccinated but has symptoms and is shown to be COVID positive. The criteria from, from the FDA states these individuals should receive monoclonal antibodies. The study that showed this to be effective, even in this last group, is in the link below. And this was published recently in the New England Journal of Medicine as well. This is important because Regeneron is the only monoclonal antibody that was studied in the vaccinated people. The study demonstrated that their symptoms were decreased by two weeks. But Regeneron monoclonal antibodies do not replace vaccine getting the vaccine. It does not replace getting the vaccine. Everyone needs to be vaccinated. The quicker we accomplish this in the United States, the quicker we can reach out and help other people around the world to become fully vaccinated. The virus is looking for unvaccinated people to mutate and make even more lethal virus than the Delta variant. They tell me there's another variant that might be of concern, mu variant. More to come on this. Regeneron is the only monoclonal antibody that can be given subcutaneously. Also remember, with the post-exposure patients, that is a patient who has been exposed to a positive patient, and remember that is being in contact with someone for more than 15 minutes, whether it's a straight 15 minutes or five minutes at a time. These patients can receive Regeneron IV or subcutaneously. That's like under the skin. Um, so there's four shots subcutaneously up under the skin that can be given or IV. But it has to be Regeneron. The other monoclonal antibodies have not been studied subcutaneously. There's a website called Combat COVID which has more information about monoclonal antibodies if you want to learn more about them. The link to that website is in the description below. Well, that's it for today. Remember to subscribe and to hit that like button if you found this helpful and we will continue to update you on more COVID information as it continues to unfold. Thanks and we'll see you next week.